Okay. Uh, you can see we've got a bunch of different inputs here for p-search. If we didn't want to actually search based on another particle, we could take maybe a node and we'll drop a point helper in here. We'll pick that point helper and then we'll just feed his position in there. And let's go ahead and get that group operator back in there. Let's say all the found PIDs, pipe them into the green group. And as we we can move that helper and then update the frame and we can see that it's going to go ahead and just use whatever his position is and search around that position, search among the blue particles and find all those. Um, and of course we can dynamically input a group, we can input uh, the boolean of whether or not to use a subtree and the scalar radius value which we see right here. So, so p-search is very very useful for uh, whenever you have a particle um, or a bunch of particles out in space and you want to be able to t detect like which ones are close to what. Um, if you have maybe these red particles flying around you could have them uh, locate the nearest uh, blue particle using a p-search and fly over toward him and consume him. Um, that'd be a fun one. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's say we're just going to go ahead and go kind of fast on this. We'll take this red particle. It's going to do a p-search among blue. And we're going to set it up like this. We're going to have the red particle memorize who is the nearest particle. And so we're going to have red memorize a particle. This is going to be, we'll just use that. It's going to be the input. We'll take the nearest PID there. And then we're going to create another rule that says, OK, I want red to look up in memory who he found. So we're going to want an output. And let's do this. Let's say, um, yeah, let's, we've got, we're going to want to calculate a distance. We're going to want to use red's distance and that particle's position. These two positions, red's position and memory, the memory particles position. We can, remember we can just pipe in actual particles into these position inputs or whatever the other inputs are and it will translate and figure out what information we're looking for. Just be careful if you're doing a, um, something like velocity or position it might get confused so you might want to be specific. But Okay and then we can take this and then we can go ahead and feed this into a velocity to control the red particle and we want to say Oh, we want to dynamically affect, first of all, his direction. And we could even modify his speed. Let's do a little float there. Let's take that distance, um, multiply. Oh, so what do we want to have happen? If it's a long distance, we want a faster speed. Um, let's just go ahead and set it up like this for now. Float into speed. So red particle is going to look up the memory particle, who he stored. Remember, he stored him here in this search. He found the nearest particle ID, and now he's going to, in the next rule, red particles still got him in memory. He's going to look up their two positions using a distance condition. Uh, we're not going to use the condition part of it at all. We're just using it for distance and direction calculation. And it's going to figure out the vector direction toward that uh, target particle and take note that we've got these position inputs reversed. This will calculate a vector from red toward that particle. And he's going to go ahead and then he's going to fly toward him that direction um, at a speed based on the distance. So let's go ahead and see what happens. Uh, we probably need to increase his radius just so he has plenty of targets available. Oh, well, here's the thing. We need to have, once he comes within a certain distance of that particle, we want that uh, target particle to die. So we forgot to do that. Let's go ahead and stick in a particle die. Um, this is the particle that we want to have die. We want him to die when that distance is between, oh, let's say 0 and 1. Um, so we are actually going to use the condition output. And let's go ahead and see. There goes red. He is he is memorizing the new newest nearby uh, blue particle, flying toward him, um, 
killing him off once he gets close enough, at which point he's going to come through this rule and find a new blue, store him in memory, and then he's going to figure out, okay, where is that blue, which direction do I need to go to get to him, and how fast should I go, and then once he gets close enough, he's going to kill him. So there we go, he flies around and he's going to zoom all around and eventually he'll go ahead and consume all of them because um, the search radius is large enough that uh, he's just going to work his way through there. So that is particle search. Particle search again is great for having um, detecting how far or where nearby particles are, um, what their nearby density is, maybe you want to have a the red particle detect, okay, find the most dense part of these uh, blue particles and go after them. Uh, this would be great for things like battle scenarios um, and quite a few other options. So there we go.